and strength and ever present help and trouble. Therefore, we would not fear. Though the earth give away and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. holy place where the most high dwells. God is within her. She would not fall. God would help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice and the earth's melt. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done. The desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted and the earth. I declare to you, brothers and sisters, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we all be changed in a flash and the twin at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound the dead will be raised and perishing and we will be changed for the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality when the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality. Then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin. And the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword. 
as it is written. For your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor death, nor anything else in all creation able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord the Lord is my shepherd I lack nothing he makes me lie down in green pastures he leads me beside Quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkness valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. Puff overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Do you know not that all of us who are, who have been baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death. We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death. So that as Christ was raised from the dead, by the glory of the Father, we too may walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united with him and a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him and a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the sinful body might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin for he who has died is free from sin but if we have died in Christ we believe that we shall also live with him for we know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. But you have received the spirit of sonship. When we cry, our Father, is the Spirit Himself bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, their heirs, 
heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ. Provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present times are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subject to futility, not of his own, but by the will of him who subjected it in hope. You may be seen. now have a opening prayer by Melvin Allen. Look to the family, Burnell and Pam and Terrell and Sylvia, thank you for this great honor to be able to stand before you and our good friend Liz today. Some remember probably Miss Liz worked with youth services before even coming to the Boys and Girls Club. And uh, one hot summer day of summer camp, it was early 90s, 92, 93, I was young on the job. Uh, here, we called Eliza at the time, walks through the front door and says, you got to hire me. I said, Okay. She said, I just quit my job. <laughs> I told them that you would hire me. And I said, okay. And I said, I only have one job, and it was a membership secretary, Terrell. <laughs> and at that time, minimum wage, I think, was $425, $450 an hour. I told her that, and she said, okay. And while she was talking, and she was quite worked up because Somebody at that last job had made her mad, and she had quit. And she was talking, and her hands were moving, and I've known her all my life, and I'm saying, Liza, calm down. And all I can remember is that she had a gold fingernail <laughs> on a gold uh, uh, chain linked to a gold ring, and she was just a talking. And I was thinking that if I hire her, she's going to be telling me what to do every day. <laughs> and, and I hired her. And right after I hired her, I told her that it was $4.25 an hour. And she quickly got on the job of telling me what to do. She said, I'll take it, but I need a dollar more. And for nearly 20 years, she was telling me what to do but I watched this flower bloom. I watched her get her undergraduate degree. She told me that I'm gonna have your job one day, and she did. <laughs> flower kept on blooming, and I saw her get her undergraduate, her master's degree, and move up. So when the family asked me to say the opening prayer, I was honored said they wanted to say a prayer of celebration and a prayer of thanksgiving. And together we're going to do that. Amen. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Oh, Father in heaven, you tell us in all of our ways we must acknowledge you. And you promise to direct our path. 
Many times along the path, Lord, there's detours, there's bumps, there's pitholes. That journey is not always easy, but you have promised to direct our path. So on this journey right now, uh, Lord, we, we want to first acknowledge you, he who created the heavens and the earth, he who is too wise to make a mistake. Lord, even with this situation, we trust, even we can't trace you, but we trust that your will has been done. God, we thank you for the life of Miss Liz. We thank you for sending her to us. God, and we thank you for Miss Liz who was willing to cooperate with your spirit to demonstrate to all of us what a Christ-like life is all about. She demonstrated what feeding the hungry looks like, serving, yea, thousands and thousands of young people look like, clothing young people, giving coats out during the winter, all those things, what a Christ-like life looks like. Oh God, what a portrait you and Miss Liz drew for all of us to look at. What a picture, oh God, of a life of Miss Liz. What an example. So God, we thank you for Miss Liz and her willingness to serve others. Serve all but those who needed us most. So Lord, we thank you for a demonstration of what unconditional love looks like through Miss Liz. So Lord, we thank you for the life, uh, the passion, and the purpose of Miss Liz. Now, Father, we know that this is a tough time for the family. So God, we pray now that you demonstrate to them that you are God of comfort. So God, where there is cries, Lord, give them comfort. So Father, where there's pain, give them peace. Because you are truly the God of peace, the God that passes all understanding. So God, we, we know your spirit is here right now. But Lord, as the prophet requested, I'm requesting on behalf of the family and friends today, as he requested, Lord, a double portion. God, we ask for a double portion of your spirit right now. Comfort everyone. Let them know all is well. Miss Liz has ran a good race. Lord, and has set a good example for each of us. Have us to remember this beautiful portrait of life that she has drawn for each of us to remember. In Jesus' name. We pray, amen. Let church say amen. To the saints in attendance, let us take our attention to the book of Isaiah, chapter 41. I say a four to one, and for this Old Testament uh, scripture reading, we'll be looking at verses nine and ten. And the Bible speaks from the New King James Version, as it speaks to all those who the Lord have called, as He's speaking to Israel, to whom I have taken from the ends of the earth, and called from the farthest region. And say to you, you are my servant. I have chosen you and have not cast you away. Verse 10, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. May the Lord bless the reading of the word. May the Lord bless the hear and do us of the word. Amen. 
to this lovely family, family that Liz has poured so much into. But I guess we all can say that as families that have had the privilege to spend time with her. The New Testament scripture will come from 1 Corinthians 15, starting at the 50th verse. And we will also do Ephesians. The 50th verse, it says, Now I say this, believers, that flesh and blood cannot inherit nor be part of the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable, the mortal, inherit immortality, the immortal. Listen very carefully. I tell you a mystery, a secret truth decreed by God and previously hidden, but now revealed. We were not all sleep and death, but we are all completely changed, wonderfully transformed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the sound of the last trumpet call, for a trumpet will sound, and the dead who believe in Christ will be raised in parable and will be completely changed, wonderfully transformed. For this parable part of us must put on parable, and it says immortality, nature. And this mortal, Part of us is capable of dying, must put on immortality, which is freedom from death. And when this parable put on immortality and this mortal put on immortality, then the scripture will be fulfilled that says death is swallowed up in victory, vanished forever. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin by which is bring forth death is the law. But thanks be to God. Thanks be to God who gives us victory as conquerors to our Lord Jesus the Christ. Therefore, my beloved brothers and sisters, be steadfast, unmovable, always excelling in the works of the Lord, always doing your best and doing more than is needed, which Miss Leas did, being continually aware that your labor, even at the point of exhaustion in the Lord, is not futile or wasted. It always has a purpose. It's never in vain. God bless this word. God bless each of you. We pray that these words will flow through your hearts as you press your way on to be reunited. But we know that we all will be caught up, those that are in Christ, and you will see her again. To God be the glory for all he has done. days are coming it can get rough in this world I know it ain't easy but hang on in there I know better days are coming you've seen good you've seen bad you've been happy and sad but 
just remember that better days, better days are coming. Friends will leave you all by yourself. But don't cry, cause better days are coming. Oh, better days, better days, better. It's only a season that you're going through. But stay focused and never lose sight. I know people you feel inside but keep on smiling cause everything will be alright oh, days oh, first by Mr. Patrick Wynn, president of the Boys and Girls Club. Good afternoon. Barneo, Silvia, Terrell. I love you guys. Um, very grateful for this opportunity to speak on Miss Liz and um, Melvin. I'll pick up right where you left off. Um, my first time meeting Miss Liz, it's 1998. I just started at Boys and Girls Clubs. I was a young club director in Berkeley. Back then, we had like two vans. And uh, I was supposed to have the band back in Miss Liz's club at about 3.30. I was about five minutes late. And she called me. And she said, uh, I know you don't know who I am. And I know you're new. But you need to ask somebody how it works around here. 
and I said, I'm sorry. She said, that's okay, I know you're sorry, but just don't let it happen again. And uh, so I called the office. I was like, who is Miss Liz? And it's like, oh, that's Miss Liz. That's the mom of the Boys and Girls Clubs. <laughs> but uh, we had some great times. And in 2008, when I was named president of Boys and Girls Clubs, she called me and she said, uh, you my boss now, but I'm old enough to be your mama. <laughs> and don't you forget that. And so she kind of set the tone for me, man, the same way she did for you as we moved on and, and uh, accomplished all the things she's accomplished as Boys and Girls Clubs. I was praying to God about a message for Miss Liz. And uh, I was trying to say, I was asking the Lord, what do you say about a woman that gave her life to this community? This community is a better place because of Miss Liz. And I was just looking for something profound to say. And, the, and God just kept showing me a word, and it was standard. And he kept showing me the word, and I was like, that's it? He said, yes, she was the standard. And I looked the word standard up. Five, six definitions, Bernal, the word excellence was in the meaning of the standard. And that's what Miss Liz was, excellence. She, her club, was the measuring stick for our organization. Everything that we did at Boys and Girls Clubs, every grant that we went after, every program that we started, we put James A. Lane here. And we said, if James A. Lane can do it at Miss Liz's club, we can do it at any club. She was the standard. Miss Liz was the standard. When you think about, this was year 31. We, her club averages about 1,000 kids a year, different kids coming through her building. Multiply that by 31 years. How many lives she's touched? How many kids she's raised? And she was a mother to us all. She, wasn't, she, she probably wasn't five feet tall. <laughs> but she could walk in the gym with 200 kids, and you can hear a pin drop. She didn't have to say a word. She just had that presence about her. And it was just something special about Miss Liz and the way that she could command a room and the way she loved on people. And as we were reflecting as a Boys and Girls Club staff this past week, I loved hearing the stories of every individual person that had in time when she went out of her way to help somebody. And she never talked about it. She never talked about it because that's just who she was. She was a mother to us all. And she'll let you know. She'll let you know. But at the end of the day, they said it's the two most important days in your life is the day you were born and when you figure out why God put you on this earth. And Miss Liz, she knew her why. She knew her why. I pray. You know, Pastor Davis, the head of this church, always says we all get a turn. I just pray that when my turn comes, that I can have, make, have half the impact that Miss Liz had on this community. So I, I say that to say this. Miss Liz was the standard. She brought excellence into everything she did. She drove Burnell crazy because she wanted to get keep the fingerprints off every window. I mean, that's how she ran on boys and girls clubs. She would drive the staff crazy because she would say, I see a, I see a fingerprint. I was like, Miss Liz, you got 300 kids. You won't see a fingerprint. But excellent is what she was about. And I bring you guys greetings. Her impact wasn't just felt here. Our national president, Boys and Girls Clubs of America, saw saw. He called me, and he wanted to send greetings from Atlanta. Jim Clark, our national president, and I wanted to share this letter with you from the president of Boys and Girls Clubs of America. Every, everybody's mom, and mom everybody wanted. That's what comes to mind when I think about Liz Clemens on how, and how so many young people saw Miss Liz through their eyes. It is difficult for her Boys and Girls Clubs family to imagine Miss Liz not being at the club. 
we welcome and greet and guide so many young people there. There is so much to say about Miss Liz that words cannot fully describe in a succinct way. For me, she was a light humanity, shining through so much darkness in our society because she believed everyone could be great. If you apply yourself, hold yourself to a higher standard and set expectations. If it were not for Miss Liz, tens of thousands of young people would have gone the wrong way. Instead, they turn into fantastic citizens in our communities, supporting families and neighborhoods. For over 30 years, she led the historic James A. Lane Boys and Girls Clubs, the first in the city of Huntsville. During that time, she believed every young person had a purpose and worked tirelessly to ensure each child realized the fullest extent of their purpose. For Miss Liz, it was not about surviving, it was about thriving through difficult times, seemingly insurmountable obstacles. In this spirit that she imparted upon youth, Miss Liz is an icon in Boys and Girls Club movement. Amen. And a hero to us all. It is her life's mission to serve the community and youth, aiming everyone towards a great future. We will, we will all stand on her shoulders as we move forward and never forget the life lessons she taught us and the lives she transformed and saved. Miss Lee is filled with humility, empathy, resilience, and stood for everything good in our nation. She was a modern day warrior, fighting every day to give kids a future. Her branding was optimism, and she, she always fought the bright light at the end of the tunnel. Miss Liz would be missed, but not forgotten. She was a great spouse, mother, grandmother, servant leader, and a great American. Thank you. can you say? About my mama. Thank you. Uh, thank you. And I'm the strong one, they say. <laughs> my mama raised three girls by herself in county court. That's where it started. That's where it started, child. And that was a task because I was bad. <laughs> she kept us together. She really did. She kept our hair straight, kept our clothes clean. She fed us well My, while other kids was eating Pop-Tarts and cornflakes for breakfast. <laughs> we were eating cube steaks and gravy. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet rice and biscuits. <laughs> and my family know that's true. <laughs> she held on to us. She wouldn't let us do much. And I know I got some friends in here probably everywhere, but it's a shame when your mama is so profound. And they say, <laughs> she'll walk outside and say, don't get off that porch. Now, most of your friends will tell you, come on, come on. And our friends was like, don't step off the porch. Don't you step off that porch. She didn't play. She did not. Um, you heard the boys and girls stories. She did walk in there like that. That was my mama. 5'2", Pat, 5'2". <laughs> Full of power. Absolutely. Um, I remember going up to the Boys and Girls Club sometime volunteering, doing things, and I have to tell this one story, and I think many people know it. <laughs> there was this little boy in there named Day Day. Uh, Day Day was bad. 
<laughs> he know he bad. <laughs> he know he bad. We loved Day Day, but Day Day was bad. And it seemed like every day, Mama had him in the office. On this particular day, I was there. Mama said, I'm, I'm going to get you. Calvin, I think you were in the office that day. Mama looked at me and said, come in here. You need to hear this. So I walk in like, he finna get a paddle and so what is it? Mama had him locked up. He said, Mama said, now what I tell you? He said, okay, Miss Liz, let us pray. Please, Miss Liz. Oh, Lord, Miss Liz. Let us pray, Miss Liz. Miss Liz, hold on, Miss Liz. Lord, please let her hand be light. So when she hit me, it won't hurt, Lord. Miss Liz ain't gonna do it again. I died. Mama couldn't even powder him that day. She let him go. Yeah. That was funny, but I remember that. And there was another time when I would volunteer and I would come in there and the games room would be kind of loud. So I would say, all right, y'all settle down. And she didn't ask me to help, but she said, all right. I said, all right, y'all settle down. And then this little five two come out and say, stop hollering at my kids. I said, but th that's what you do. When my mama fell ill, we recorded a lot, spent a lot of time with my mother, this strong person. And sometimes I still can't believe that this is happening. But I was listening this morning to some of the recordings that I had of her. And this is what one said. I had to transcribe it. My mama said, always do what you can do. She said, you my child. She said, but I'm God's child. She said, God has something for us in this world. Whatever he has for us, we can't get out of this world without it. My mother was loving and passionate she was good and kind and endearing. And everything that she is, I became. She went to school, I went to school. She joined the best organization in the world, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. <laughs> I had to do that for her. I was waiting on the ski week, but I guess y'all, y'all all teared up. <laughs> Thank you, Sorority. But everything she, she was, I became. She was truly my superhero, my sisters, her grandchildren, family. My mama was everything. My mama is a true icon. She is a legend, and she will forever be remembered. I wanna thank you all for sharing so much love for her. It's more than my heart can stand. And I had a lot of family ask me, why are you so strong? And this is why. One, because of her. When you've taken care of your mother, you made sure that she was absolutely okay. When you begged God and asked him to take some of your blessings to place upon your mother. I watch and was there with my mother. God placed us in the waiting room with her. She gave us a little guidance on what we need to do. She said, when he called for me, I won't be here. I won't be able to come back. She said, but rough stuff. <laughs> That's what she called me. She said, rough stuff, you take your sisters and you do what I told you to do, all right? So I'm taking my sisters. My mother has passed the batons to us. Our race has started. So move, because you understand that power. You're going to have to understand this. God bless you all for loving my mother as much as you have, as much as you do. Thank you.
This is going to be tough. On February 8th, I shattered. And I felt like that my soul left my body. My mother was my everything. This is no, I'm sorry. Those of you that know my mother know that she did everything in excellence. And she expected excellence out of each and every last one of us. My mother never met a stranger. And if you had the pleasure of meeting her, I'm sure you guys had the chance to experience her warm heart, the concern that she had for you, the love that she had for you. But if she really liked you, you probably got an invitation over to the house uh, for Sunday dinner. And if you accepted that invitation, you found out that she was an amazing cook. <clears throat> every phone call I received, almost every person has said the same thing. Your mother was a beacon of light. Your mother loved everyone. Your mom was always smiling and joking and making other people happy. Your mother helped me so much. I could go on and on about everything that my mom has done for people here in this community. I realized the impact that my mother has had on so many people. <sighs> So many people have called and given their condolences and shared stories about my mom. That's when I realized my mother's selflessness. She was concerned more with the needs and wishes of others than oneself. I remember whenever my mother first told us of her diagnosis, we were all scared. I'm going to take you all on a little journey. I'm going to bring you into the house. Okay? We were all scared. And she looked at me and she said, Don't be scared. God got me. I'm going to be okay. I put all faith in God and into those doctors' hands. He got me. And she got through it the first time. She got through it, therapy and all. Then months later, we were told that the tumor was growing back. And it came back with a vengeance. My sister Pam actually gave it a name. I forget what you called it, but it came back with a vengeance. And it took over my mother's brain. It's a cuss word. I can't say it. She can't say it in church. <laughs> 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 yeah, <laughs> indeed it was, <laughs> yes, <laughs> so I remember looking at my mama and I said, well, mama, I said, it looks like we got another fight ahead of us, and she looked at me, she said, well, you know, I like to fight, and if y'all knew her, y'all know she could fight, she could, and I looked back at her and I said, me too, let's get it. And we busted out laughing, and then our journey began. All of us, Pop, Terrell, my other sister, Pam, all of us, we mounted up and we took care of our mother every step of the way. I want to share a few memories that I have with my mom. Y'all know she was a comedian up until, if you guys would have been there, my mom was so sharp. She was so sharp up until her last breath. Um, I remember whenever she started losing mobility on her left side. I would go home, I would go over there, and I would do her in-house therapy. And we had this little exercise that we would do. We, would, we called it our up-downs and our side-to-side. -side. That was our dancing session. So whenever I would go in, I would, I would say, you ready to dance? Mind you, she couldn't move on this left side, but she would move her foot and say, yeah, I'm ready. So we started dancing. I, rem I remember feeding my mom, and she got annoyed with me. Um, one of our little words that we <laughs> would do, we would, be, we would say, Mama say, ah, to let her know that the food was coming towards her mouth. So on this particular day, I was like, Mama, come on. I said, you got to eat. You got to get strong. And the way I would get her to eat, I would actually tell her that I called into the Steve Harvey show, and Steve Harvey said that you got to eat. So she was eating, and I said, Mama say, ah. So she looked at me. She said, ah. Don't want no more. <laughs> and I was like, okay. I said, okay. D you know, I'm sorry. So <laughs> she ended up giving all her daughter's nicknames. Um, this was rough stuff. Pam was rough stuff. I don't know where she got Eunice from, but Terrell turned into Eunice. And she called me Naptail. So that was another thing that she did um, with us. Um, and another memory that I have with my mom, she looked at me and she said, this was one day I was taking care of her, and she looked at me and she said, you got 24 hours, sip, sip. 
you got 24 hours to cry and get it all out. Then I'm gonna have to. Then you're gonna have to pick things up and handle business the way I taught you to. She said, handle it. And I said, Mama, that's easy for you to say. You, you know, I don't, I don't want to talk about this right now. I can't talk about this with you right now. The last moments I had with my mom were difficult ones. The last day that I had with my mother, I had to do her makeup. I walked in to her room and she was laying there. And at first, I didn't recognize her. My sisters were there with me. One of my aunts was there with me for support. And I got so nervous and I was like, how am I gonna get through this? And then I reverted back to what she told me. You got 24 hours, then you need to handle business. I was shaking so bad, I literally started shaking my hands out to get the nervousness out of my hands so that I can form her face and start doing her makeup. I looked at her and I said, Mama, I know I got this, I'm just scared. My sisters was looking at me and I remember, I remember Pam telling me, we saw you whenever you got your mojo, mojo and I just started working on my mama's face. Slowly. And I literally, I just tapped out and went into a zone. And when I was done, I stepped back and I looked at her and I heard my mother say, there you go, Sib Sib. I told you you could do it. Look at me. I look good, don't I? I said, yeah. And, then I'm, and I'm like talking to her like, yeah, mama, you do. You look great. You look absolutely wonderful. Those were, that, that, that was the hardest time for me. I always try to find a lesson in someone's transition. This time it was a little difficult because it was my mom. So every day since February 8th, I would wake up and I would say, what are you trying to teach me, God? What lessons are you trying to show me? What are you trying to tell me? So I think back how hard she fought her battle with cancer up until her last breath. And I remember saying to her, I was hugging my mom. I remember saying to her, my mom even learning so much from you at this moment. And what I took from that was for me to never be afraid to face anything, even when I think it's difficult. Love hard, be kind, and be an example to put others first and self last. I remember my mom saying, I'm gonna be okay. She knew regardless when God's will was done, she knew where she was going and she was going to be okay. My mom went, ran her own race and she did it her way. Matthew 25 and 23. His Lord said unto him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you a ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Well done, good and faithful servant. Mama, may the work you have done here speak for you. Well done, good and faithful servant. Well done. At this time, we now have resolutions, if there be any. Are there any resolutions?
a resolution in loving memory of Mrs. Liz Smith Clemens. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life, saith the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. John, 16, John 11, 25 through 26. Servant of God, well done. The battle is fought. The victory is won. Teach us the number of our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom, for all must build for eternity. Whereas it is pleased our Heavenly Father to transition from labor to this life for the rest and fellowship with the saints in heaven. Our beloved sister, Sister Liz Clemens, who departed this life on February 8, 2023. Sister Cameron, I'm sorry, Sister Clemens served our Lord faithfully here at St. James PB Church as a Sunday school teacher, assistant Sunday school secretary, member of the church choir, and member of the pastoral committee for many years. She labored hard and long, and now the Lord has promised her just rewards. We hope to meet again beyond the great horizon, whereas the church and community were richly blessed by this beautiful life, and we bow in humble submission to him that is too wise to make a mistake. We extend our heartfelt sympathy to the family and friends and commend them to the divine guidance of one that is able to do all things well. Be it further resolved that the St. James Primitive Baptist Church family is praying for you, the Smith and Clemens family. Rely on him who can and will heal all sorrow. It is further resolved that a copy of this resolution be given to the family and a copy be placed in church records. Sorrowfully submitted on the 17th day of February, 2023. Elder Dr. Patrick S. Arrington, pastor, members of the St. James Primitive Baptist Church, Mother Loretta Brown, church secretary.
have some soft music as we read the obituary side.
Jesus. He's a sweet Jesus. Sweet Jesus. I love to call Jesus. I love to call Jesus. I love to call Jesus. 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 Yes, you show up in my attitude. You show up in my gratitude. Father, we thank you for the life that we celebrate today. Father God, we thank you for what we've heard thus far. But dear Lord, as we stand now before thee, we ask that you open up the windows of heaven and pour down a word for your people. Father God, I just ask right now that you open up their hearts so that their word may penetrate their hearts and be manifest in their lives. But dear Lord, as we celebrate Sister Liz, we give you thanks for your darling son Jesus who made this day ever so possible. So it's in your name we pray and we say thank you. In the mighty, magnificent name of Jesus Christ, let every blood washed believer say, Amen. Good afternoon. Hold on. Good afternoon. All right. We're at a homegoing celebration. And my job is quite easy now. I'm listening to what Brother Alvin said, and then Mr. Wynn got up, and then the girls got, I said, well, I might as well sit on that. But in listening to those individuals speak, God confirmed with me that the things that I wanted to share was on point. First of all, to the family, we love you. And we're going to be always by your side and praying for you. To the shepherd of this great church in his absence, we thank you for the hospitality that we have been shown since we've been here. We thank you, Union Chapel, for your great acts of kindness. One thing that I want to share with you and I think those of us who knew Sister Liz and those of you who have known her for years and years know that she was not a stranger to work. Am I right? Now, I only knew her for a short time during my pastorate at St. James and during that short time of knowing her, she made it clear who she was and what she was going to do and what she was not going to do. And one thing I understood that what she was not going to do is be slouchy with anything. 
I can recall as I first visited St. James and as a visitor, and I saw it, and I really didn't get a chance to meet him. But then after I became the pastor and I saw the total renovation that was done in the pastoral office, it looked like somebody came in with a catalog and just started replacing everything one by one by one. Sister Liz did. But I want you to know that the work that she did on this side can't stop now. There's still a lot of work to be done. So as I was praying and sitting and asking the Lord to help me, even on yesterday, I was like, Lord, what do we do to celebrate someone who has touched so many people? He says, you keep it simple. I said, okay. So with that, I was led to a passage of scripture that I'm going to share with you today. In the book of Nehemiah. Chapter 6, beginning with verses 1, and I'm going to read verses 1, 2, and 3 in your hearing. Amen? Reading from the New King James Version, it reads as follows. Now it happened when Sanballat and Tobiah and Geshem the Arab and the rest of our enemies heard that I had rebuilt the wall and that there were no breaks left in it. Though at a time I had not hung the doors and the gates, that Sambalit and Geshem sent to me saying, come, let us meet together among the villages and the plain of Ono. But they thought to do me harm. So I sent messages to them saying, I'm doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease while I leave it to go down to you? For a thought this evening, and we're not going to be long, let's talk on the subject for a few minutes when the work is done. when the work is done. Sister Liz has done so much in her lifetime. She loved her husband and she loved her kids. But the love didn't stop there. For hundreds of other children from the Boys and Girls Club looked at her as a surrogate mother. faithful member of a church where she was part of various ministries and auxiliaries. But for those who knew Liz, she had a deep passion for service through her sorority, as you can tell by the ladies dressed in pink. As we see in the text, Nehemiah was persistent about his work to the extent that he would not come down from the wall for unproductive chatter. No, he, he wasn't coming down. To paraphrase what Nehemiah was saying, I come down from the wall when the work is done. I submit to you today that Sister Liz had the same zeal about her work. She had the same passion about the people and the things that she valued in her life. That she could not come down until the work was done. She wouldn't come down from the wall 
until the work was done. You know, we all hear this thing that we've been taught, always do your job, try to do a good job. But we all hope to hear the words that Jesus spoke in. And, and when the sister said it, I said, Lord, you got me on the right spot. That Jesus spoke in Matthew 25, 21. He said, his Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things, and now I will make you rule over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. See, Miss Liz was similar to Nehemiah. For she wouldn't come down until the work was done. One thing that I want you to understand is that she was persistent in her task. As we look back at Nehemiah for reference, we understand that Nehemiah had to rebuild the wall. For the wall was weak and it had breaks in it. And I don't know about y'all, but if you ever had a fence in your backyard and the fence just ain't right, if you want to see an example, you come to mind. When you can look toward the wall or toward the fence and you can see things that you're not supposed to see, you know that the fence in the wall needs to be repaired. Liz was giving a task of rebuilding not just the wall, but she was rebuilding the lives of young boys and young girls. She was rebuilding lives. The text informs us that nearby rebuilt the wall to the extent that the walls were now solid, having no breaks. He had to be vigilant in his work, finding all the cracks and replacing all the weak areas with strong material. Sister Liz did the same thing in her life. All the things that she came across that were weak and obsolete, she replaced them with her love and her kindness. When those who were misunderstood, she gave them compassion. Those who were angry and full of mistrust and full of gall, she gave them love. How do I know? Because I saw it firsthand in action. There were people who were trying to attack different ones, but instead of her sitting back and watching, as some of us do sometimes, she said, no, we ain't going to do this today. There's got to be a different way for you to handle this. I want to tell you something. I wish some of us most of us could be as persistent in our task as Liz was in hers. See, today is not for Liz. Today is to celebrate her life, but this life should not be in vain if you don't take an example of how she lived hers. How can we let such a good example of servanthood Go by the wayside if we don't try to replicate it. I submit to you that through her family, through her friends, through her sorority, somebody has picked up something that she did. I know somebody on this section knows some things about Liz that they're going to keep on doing hereafter. I know somebody in that section say, Miss Liz used to do it this way. Let's keep it going like this. I know there are some things in her persistence that she showed us that we're going to keep on doing. If you come into St. James, you'll still see remnants of her actions. 
if you just look around when you come into our view, and some people say, it's sure enough it's pretty in here. I can't take credit for it, but all I can say is Sister Liz had a hand in doing that. So the question that I ask you today, we know how persistent and diligent she was. The question I propose to you, are you diligent in completing the task that the Lord has given you? You see, as a Christian, God has given each of us a task to complete. But sometimes we allow others to distract. We allow things to get in our way where we say, maybe we're going to take an easier path. Maybe we just won't do it. But I'm trying to let you know that some of us are coming down from the wall before the work is done. You know, a lot of us don't like hard work. Am I right? There used to be a time when we would work and your manager would say, we got overtime to do and people would jump up for overtime. You say something about overtime nowadays, folks are like, I'm going home at five o'clock. <laughs> I was going to give my day to somebody else to cover my shift. I, I, I don't even need for it. I'll do 32. <laughs> Times have changed and Sister Liz understood that the times were changing and that we needed to stay up on the wall and come down when the work is done. Secondly, Miss Liz knew she was doing a great work. As I look back at the words of Nehemiah, he sent a message to me, says, I'm doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Isn't it awesome to know that you're doing a great work? See, the thing is, some of us uh, have been given great works to do, and you don't even realize it or the work that you're doing does not have the glitz and glamour, so since you're not in the spotlight, you think you're not doing a great work. Some of the most important work that is ever done is done behind the scenes. Everybody ain't got to see you do your great work. Everybody didn't see Sister Liz chastising and raising thousands of kids, but we see the benefits of it now. Some didn't see how she loved her family from times when she had very little to times where things were better. But she was doing a great work. Yes, the text tells us that Nehemiah told I can't stop working now. I can't come down. For I'm doing a great work. Some people may ask Liz, why are you still trying to help all these kids? As I would hear my sanctified imagination, Miss Liz would say, I'm doing a great work. Some may have asked her, why are you working two jobs to support those girls? I think I heard her say, I'm doing a great work. Some may have asked her, why are you teaching Sunday school? All a few people showing up. I think I heard her say that I'm doing a great work. Some may ask her, why are you mentoring these young women? Why are you helping these ladies in pink and green? And I think I heard her say, I'm doing a great work. I want to tell you something. 
Can, can you keep a secret? Don't tell nobody. Anything you do to promote the kingdom of God or help his children is a great work. Anytime you pick somebody up that is down and nobody has to be around to see you do it, but anytime you show some love and compassion, you are doing a great work. And you can't come down from the wall. I think if Sister Liz could talk to you today, she'd ask you a question. What great work are you doing? Don't answer that out loud. I'm reminded of a story of a workman. He was a construction worker, young, strong man. He started working when he was about 30 years old. And he worked, and as he worked, he always worked and praised God. Whenever he showed up for work, you knew he was going to praise God. And 40 years went by, and as time went on after time, some of y'all know about time and age, right? After 40 years went by, his body was bent from the years of heavy lifting. A man that once stood straight and tall was now bent by the passage of time. A man that once had strides that could leap bounds and climb mountains now had short steps. But even in his old age, he went to work and continued to praise God. Then as time went by, he was forced to retire for he could not do the work any longer. He was eventually called to heaven. And he realized that he was in heaven and he saw an angel. And he said, angel, I'm here now. I'm ready to go to work. But my bad back and my legs just won't let. The angel said, look at yourself. He looked at his hands and what was once shriveled and bent were now full of life. The legs that was once given way from disease are now straight. The back that was once bent is now able to salute the captain. What God says, once you get to my reward, that earthly body won't matter no more. For I'm going to give you a new body. And he got there and he was ready to work and he says, I, I see what I got now and I'm, I'm excited, I'm happy, I'm ready to work. And the angel says, your work is done. All you have to do is praise. See, he lived on this side working and praising, but once he got to the other side, all he has to do is keep on praise. For he didn't come down from the wall until he was done. I'm preparing to take my seat but I want you to know that Nehemiah stayed on the wall until the work was done. But there's going to come a time for all of us, each and every one, whom we must come down from the wall. 
Sister Liz came down from the wall eight days ago. And now she's gone to do something else. She's coming down from working on the wall to going to the other side of the wall. Some in here may say she's now going beyond the wall. She's now on the other side and not only is she beyond the wall, but now she's walking in a city where the streets are paved in gold. She's beyond the wall. Have you heard of the city? Where the streets are paved in gold? Where there are mansions that you didn't even build that now you will live in. Have you heard of the city? A place filled with peace, love, and praise. Have you heard of the city? But I want you to understand that all of you, each and every one, will someday have an opportunity to be there. But you just got to keep doing your work. You can't let nobody stop you. You can't let circumstances get in your way. And when somebody says, why don't you stop? What you need to tell them is that I can't come down right now. Not until the work is done. Now when you get to heaven, and for those who knew Sister Liz, she had a sense of humor. And she would want me to tell you about this story of a young girl who got to heaven. Her time came and the angel said, you, you ready to go? She said, yeah, I'm ready. I'm definitely ready to go to heaven. And she looked in her room and she saw a table prepared. Everything that you could imagine to eat was on the table. If you wanted collard greens, it was there. If you wanted turkey, it was there. Whatever your heart's desire, everybody was at the table. And it was looking good. And she says, I want you to notice the people at the table. Look at the food. And everybody at the table had a spoon and a fork. And she says, do you want to stay here? And the girl said, well, I don't know. You tell me. And as she watched the people in this first place, they grabbed their fork and their spoon and they dapped it in the food and they tried to eat, but they kept missing the mouth because the spoon was too long. Every time they dip in and go, they would throw food all over the place. Everything was just a mess. And then she's like, no, I don't, don't want to be here. So the angel took her to another room. Same spread, same laid out, and they dipped into the food, and they had the same exact spoons and forks. But instead of trying to feed themselves when they went in they reached across and fed the brother and sister across sister Liz will want you to be here helping somebody else get to where they need to be don't be so selfish that you can't feed your brother or sister don't be so selfish that you can't show somebody else some love because in showing love and mercy, what you're doing is saying that I'm still doing a great work and I can't come down from the wall until the job is done. May the Lord bless you and keep you. It's my prayer. We now have closing prayer. And after closing prayer, we'll be led by the directors.
fit in there. I know if I'm so, all I'm supposed to do is pray. But uh, I just got to sit here. And I uh, hope y'all don't mind. Sister Clemens was a friend of mine. And I have to say this, is we didn't always get along, <laughs> but we always worked it out. And uh, when Deacon Clemens asked me, I told him I'd be more than glad to. So, since this, you're going on. No more Sunday school. But we'll meet again someday. Amen. Shall we pray? Our dear Heavenly Father, here we are once again standing before you. Lord, we come to you asking that you would please put words in my mouth that I might speak for you. Lord God, I know you know all about me. You know about Sister Liz. You know about the family that she left behind. Please, Father, we ask thee, we prepare them to meet you. Then meet their mother, the sisters, the grandchildren, y'all. Take care. Knowing that Sister Clemens is in a better place. She survived this life for a few years. She's touched a few lives. But most of all, she became a child of the Most High King. Lord, I come to you asking you to please be with me as I go through this life. Able me to shine a light to withdraw son of men, women, boys, and girls out of darkness into your marvelous light. Lord, I ask you, please, Father, to come and set up camp in our heart. The St. James Church family is going to miss her. But let her know that she's only paid the price that we all must pay. Because she had to die to this world in order to live in the next with the Lord. Father, we know that you come and Pick your flowers as you see fit. Lord, uh, you made us and you raised us. Lord, I, I, I don't know what else to say. But I know this, that I want to be wherever you are. Since Leah said she was going to be with you, and that means I'll be with her. I want the family to continue to know that if you haven't got your business fixed, now is the time. Don't wait, because it might be too late. Lord, I come to you as an empty pitcher before a full fountain, needing to be filled with your love and your mercy. And then, Father, we ask you to please just go along with us, lead us and guide us along life pathways. And then, when life journey on this old earth is over, and we can no longer be afforded a home on this side. Father, we ask that you meet us in a dying hour. See our souls safe to the cross, that great divine. Bring us home to rest with you. For we might praise you forever and forever. All these blessings and others we ask. In your darling son Jesus' name we do pray. And for his sake. Amen. Amen. And amen. Will now be led by the directors.
if you just lean on me Jesus said if you lean on me And I'm gonna let you fall if you just lean on me Jesus said you can
but don't call the road. Don't call the road Thank you. 